hello once again. This is our fifth and last episode in our series on vectors. In the first four episodes, we defined vector addition, scalar multiplication, dot product, and cross product of vectors. Let us go on to another kind of product in which we consider three vectors combined with the help of cross and dot. In these products known as triple products, some products are meaningless and some have a meaning. Let us look at the ones which do not have a meaning first. A dot B dot C does not make any sense because B dot C is a scalar and you cannot have the dot product of a vector with a scalar. Similarly, if you put the bracket around A dot B, then A dot B cross C does not have a meaning because A dot B is a scalar and you cannot have the cross product of a scalar with a vector. However, if we put the bracket around B cross C, then A dot B cross C does have a meaning because both these quantities are vectors and we observe that A dot B cross C will turn out to be a scalar being the dot product of two vectors. Similarly, A cross B cross C has a meaning because B cross C is a vector and we do know that the cross product of two vectors is a vector. The first triple product is known as the scalar triple product and the second as the vector triple product. Let us first consider properties of the scalar triple product. The first thing that we learn about A dot B cross C is a formula for it in terms of the components of A, B and C. If the components of A, B and C are A1, A2, A3, etc., then the formula says that A dot B cross C is given by the determinant in which the first row is A1, A2, A3, second is B1, B2, B3, and the third are the components of the third vector C1, C2, C3. Let us see how we would prove something like this. Basically, we consider B cross B cross C first and we do know from the component formula for cross product that B cross C is given by the determinant I J K B 1 B 2 B 3 C 1 C 2 C 3 right? So, this would work out to be something lambda 1 into i plus lambda 2 into j plus lambda 3 k where lambda 1 is b 2 c 3 minus b 3 c 2 etc. You already know how to calculate the determinant. Now, when you take the dot product of a with this vector, Then by the component rule for dot product, this will turn out to be A1 lambda 1 plus A2 lambda 2 plus A3 lambda 3. And if we look at this determinant, basically what has happened is that the first row has been replaced by A1, A2, A3. The lambda i's are the same. In other words, the second two rows will remain the same. So, without actually having to write down the meaning of lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, we can easily see that this turns out to be the determinant A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3 and that proves the formula. Now, there are some very interesting consequences of this component rule. Well, the first thing that all of you know is that in a determinant, when you interchange two rows, then the determinant gets a minus sign. That is, the sign of the determinant is reversed. So, if you interchange two rows twice, then the sign of the determinant will not change. The determinant will remain exactly the same. And therefore, for instance, if I interchange the second and the third row, so that C1, C2, C3 comes here, B1, B2, B3 comes here and then interchange 
the first and the second rows so that C1, C2, C3 comes to the top and A1, A2, A3 in second place. Then the determinant will not have changed. In other words, we have proved that A dot B cross C is equal to C dot A cross B. And I have written this down for you here, that if you interchange two rows, then you will get uh, two rows twice, then the determinant will not change. And here I have got B dot C cross A, which is again obtained in the same manner by interchanging two rows twice. Similarly, this is also equal to C dot A cross B. A dot B cross C is thus equal to C dot A cross B and is also equal to B dot C cross A. In other words, if I write down A, B, C as points on a circle and draw an arrow to indicate the clockwise order, then we find that if the cyclic order is not changed, then the scalar triple product A dot B cross C remains the same. All right. Now, what happens if we change the cyclic order? In other words, in the circle, instead of moving clockwise, we move anti-clockwise. That is, we have B, A, C or C, B, A or A, C, B. Let us see what happens. If we call the earlier scalar triple product delta, then let us look at one in which the cyclic order has been changed. A dot C cross B is equal to A dot minus B cross C. Why? Because C cross B is equal to minus B cross C. And we know that A dot lambda B is equal to lambda A dot B. So this minus sign can be brought out to the front. And so we have this is equal to minus A dot B cross C. In other words, this scalar triple product is equal to minus of delta. Similarly, by changing the cyclic order of, by retaining the cyclic order of this new scalar triple product, we have C dot B cross A, which is the same as B dot A cross C, will be the same as A dot C cross B, that is minus delta. In other words, if we change the cyclic order of a scalar triple product, then the sign of the scalar triple product is reversed. This STP here stands for scalar triple product. Now let us see what happens if we exchange the dot and the cross. A dot B cross C, we already know, is equal to C dot A cross B, right? But we know that dot product is commutative. So, I can write this as A cross B dot C. In other words, A dot B cross C is equal to A cross B dot C. Thus, in a scalar triple product, the dot and the cross can be interchanged without changing the value. And finally, very simple observation, if two terms of the scalar triple product are the same, A dot B cross A is equal to B dot A cross A, because I have not changed the cyclic order. But we know that A cross A is 0. And so, we get B dot 0, which is equal to the scalar 0. Thus, if two vectors are the same in the scalar triple product, then the scalar triple product is 0. And now let us look at the geometrical significance of the scalar triple product. The first thing that we are told is that A dot B cross C represents the volume of the parallelopiped with edges A, B and C. Now, what exactly is this parallelopiped? It is just like a cuboid, except that the edges are not necessarily perpendicular to each other. I have here a parallelopiped drawn for you. 
And before we start looking at this figure, I would just like to tell you how you would easily draw a parallelopiped. Draw a parallelogram and then draw another parallelogram similar to this, overlapping this one and then join these vertices. And this is a simple way of drawing a parallelopiped. Now, we are going to be given a parallel, parallelopiped whose edges are represented by the vectors A, B and C. Rather, in my figure, I have taken B and C as the base vectors and A as the other vector. Let us go back to my figure and see what happens to A dot B cross C. We have here an observation. You see this B cross C we know is perpendicular to the plane of B and C and therefore, I have drawn B cross C as normal to the base which is the plane of B and C. Let the angle between the vector A and the vector B cross C be called theta. Drop a perpendicular from the terminating point of A to the base. Then we can see that the angle between A and that perpendicular will also be theta because B cross C is parallel to that perpendicular. Let the height of that perpendicular be h. That is called the height of the parallelopiped. Now we can see since this angle is theta, therefore h is equal to a cos theta being the adjacent side. Now, let us look at A dot B cross C. By definition, this is equal to modulus of A into modulus of B cross C into cos of the angle between them. A modulus I write as A. A cos theta modulus of B cross C. But we observed earlier that A cos theta is equal to H. So, we get H into modulus of B cross C. But by an earlier result, mod of B cross C is nothing but the area of the parallelogram with sides vector B and vector C. In other words, area of the base parallelogram. So, we have H that is height of parallelopiped into the area of the base parallelogram, which by ordinary three dimensional geometry, we know is the volume of this parallelopiped. A second geometrical significance is what we call a coplanarity criterion. And that tells us that A, B and C vectors are coplanar if and only if their scalar triple product is 0. Now, I have written here the crux of the matter that is B cross C is defined to be perpendicular to the plane of B and C. That is the crux of the matter. But how would we prove it step by step? Well, what we would say first of all is that if A is equal to 0, then there is nothing to prove because it is clear then that a, B, C are coplanar and that A dot B cross C is 0, both conditions are true. Further, if B cross C is equal to 0, that means either B is 0 or C is 0 or they are parallel. If they are parallel, I can draw them along the same line. Then too, there is nothing to prove because both these conditions will be trivially true. So, if either of these two is true, then we say there is nothing 
to prove. This is a very favorite notation of mathematicians, nothing to prove. So, let us assume that A is not equal to 0 and B cross C is also not equal to 0. And let us prove this result in this case. Now, we know that A dot B cross C is 0 if and only if these two are perpendicular. Why? Because this is 0 if and only if this is 0 or this is 0 or these two are perpendicular. These two have been eliminated. So, we find that this is equivalent to A being perpendicular to B cross C. But we know that B cross C is perpendicular to the plane of B and C. So, if we want A to be perpendicular to B cross C, then A must lie in the plane of B and C. Which means that A, B and C are coplanar. That is it. That proves the result. And now, let us go on to the vector triple product A cross B cross C. Here is the most important result about A cross B cross C. That is, this is equal to A dot C B minus A dot B C. We put a positive sign with A dot C B and a negative sign with A dot B C. After proving it, you will have to commit this to memory so that you can use it whenever you need to. Now, the proof of this essentially depends on the component formula for cross product as well as dot product. What we do is we simplify the left hand side as well as the right hand side using the component formula. First, if we look at B cross C, B cross C by definition is given by this determinant which I can write as lambda 1 i plus lambda 2 j plus lambda 3 k where all of you can calculate the values of these lambdas. Having got that, I use the component formula once again A cross this vector is given by i j k a 1 a 2 a 3 lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3. And when it is opened out, I will get i into a 2 lambda 3 minus a 3 lambda 2 etc. You can put in the values of lambda here and call this expression 1. And now let us calculate the right hand side of the expression a dot c b minus a dot b c using the component formula for dot product that is a 1 c 1 plus a 2 c 2 plus a 3 c 3 into b 1 i plus b 2 j plus b 3 k minus a similar expression here. Expand this, simplify it and you will find that this which I call 2 is identical to 1 which means that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side and I am sure I can leave this simple calculation to you. And that is it, we go on to the problems based on the triple product. Basically, these problems will test your knowledge of the basic formulae that I have just told you. Here is an example. If A, B and C are given to you in terms of I, J and K, find A dot B cross C, A cross B cross C. So, you will make use of your determinant formula. Number 1 will be determinant of 2 minus 1, 5, 1, 0 minus 3, 3 minus 2, 1. And I am certain you can calculate this yourselves. I do not need to do that for you. 
in the second one a cross b cross c you will make use of this formula and for a dot c you will use the component rule which will be 2 into 3 plus minus 1 into minus 2 plus 5 into 1 that is the scalar into the vector b minus a dot b in a similar fashion into c. You may be given three vectors and you have to show that they are coplanar. So, you just have to remember to call them a, b and c, calculate a dot b cross c by the determinant rule, show that it is 0. Then by the result a, b and c are coplanar. Another similar one, for what values of the unknown lambda are 2i minus j plus lambda k and two other vectors coplanar. In other words, some unknown lambda will figure in one of these vectors. Let a, b and c be these vectors and use the condition for coplanarity to get that this determinant is 0. That gives you an equation in lambda, solve it to get lambda. Find the volume of the parallelopiped with edges, this, this and this. I do not need to do this for you. Call this A, B and C. Calculate A dot B cross C. That is it. And now we have another problem. Show that A plus B dot B plus C cross C plus A is equal to 2A dot B cross C. note the problem down and then just listen to me. All you have to do is first expand this bracket using the distributive property of crossover plus and using the fact that c cross c is 0. Simplify this and then take the dot product of a plus b with whatever you get here. Again using the fact that dot is distributive over plus. When you simplify this, you will get 2a dot b cross c. Remember to use the fact that in a scalar triple product, if two vectors are the same, then the scalar triple product is 0. The next problem, if a, b and c are all perpendicular to each other, show that a dot b cross c whole squared is equal to a squared b squared c squared. The only thing that you have to observe here, a dot b cross c is the volume of the parallelopiped. a dot b cross c is the volume of the parallelopiped with edges a, b and c. But since a, b and c are given to be perpendicular to each other, right? That is the new fact that is given. Therefore, this parallelopiped becomes a cuboid. And we know that the volume of a cuboid with sides A, B and C is A, B, C. Square both sides and you get your result. And you have an identity of this kind, A cross B dot C cross D is equal to A dot C into B dot D, these are two scalars, minus A dot D into B dot C. note down the problem and merely observe the following hint. Take a cross b as a single vector x to begin with. So, the left hand side is x dot c cross d. There is a dot here. And then use the properties of scalar triple product to write this as c dot d cross x. Now, put in the value of x. And this is equal to d cross a cross b. d cross a cross b by formula for d cross a cross b that is vector triple product is d dot b a minus d dot a b. I have skipped a step here. This is what we will get. 
And now we have c dot some scalar lambda a minus some scalar mu b. You can open this out and get c dot lambda a minus c dot mu b. But c dot lambda a is lambda c dot a. So this lambda that is d dot b comes here and you have c dot a here. Similarly, the second term will give me minus d dot a into c dot b. And this we can see is the same as the right hand side that we had. And then a simple identity show that a cross b cross c plus b cross c cross a plus c cross a cross b is equal to 0. All you have to do is expand all these using the formula for vector triple product. You will find terms cancelling out in pairs and so the sum of all these will be 0. And now we have a few miscellaneous problem taken from topics all over the five episodes that you have done. These are extremely important problems and great favorites with the examiners. So do take care to note them carefully. The first, if modulus of a plus b is equal to modulus of a minus b, prove that a is perpendicular to b. The hint here is square both sides. So you have a plus b squared, that is a plus b dot a plus b is equal to a minus b dot a minus b open out and get a dot b is equal to 0. That proves that a is perpendicular to b. Okay. I think you will have to put a little rider here that a is not equal to 0 and b is not equal to 0. Question number 2, if A, B and C are unit vectors, show that sin theta by 2 is half of mod A minus B, where theta is the angle between A and B. The hint here is square the right hand side. Note that A, B, C are all unit vectors. Let us see what we get. Suppose I take mod a minus b squared, right? This is a minus b dot a minus b. And we get here a squared, a dot a, that is 1. And we get b squared, which is 1. And then I have b dot a and a dot b. So I have minus 2 a dot b. This is 2 minus 2 a dot b is a b cos theta. This is 2 into a and b are both 1. So I get 2 into 1 minus cos theta, which is 2 sin squared theta by 2 taking square roots, you will get your answer. I hope you enjoyed these lessons in vectors. If you have any questions, you can always write to us and ask us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.